What's up? Got a Kaiser. Yeah. So I bought this on the used market and kind of a giveaway here. But it is a Serape Cormorant. And, uh, man, I sure do love that Cormorant. I'm going to dig all this out of here. I'm just curious what's all in here. Is that like a little... Oh. Rule number nine. It's kind of cool. Nice Kaiser logo there. What else is up in here? There's a card. And there's a lanyard bead. Look at that. I think that's ceramic. I don't know. It makes sense that it would be G10 though, wouldn't it? And there's some extra hardware. And that's it. Okay. So, um, you know, it's a little thing, but who I bought this from, um, they clearly were a smoker. And so all of this stuff smells like smoke. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to get the stink out of it. Ugh. Yeah, man. Smelly. It's amazing how cigarette smoke can just get on everything, man. Right? All right. I mean, y'all didn't come in here to see all this. And I'm going to actually try to make a little shorter video out of it all. This stuff's kind of cool, though. The little land... I bumped my... Bumped my camera. There we go. Yeah. Little lanyard bead. I'm not, you know, I'm not a lanyard on a knife person, but kind of cool. And, uh, you probably have noticed that we've got a different screen. This is actually the first video with this new black backdrop. So we're going to see how this goes. It's the inaugural. Anyway, so here we go. Serape Cormorant. It's got this Serape pattern G10. This was repped as a like new knife, never carried. So, kind of checking all that out. I mean, I don't really see any wear anywhere here. I mean, I will say that this G10 with that pattern is is kind of intriguing. Well, the detent's kind of disappointing. The blade definitely looks new, pristine. I don't see any marks on the blade anywhere. What about this side? Yeah, looks good. I mean, the action with the button is pretty good. The back flipper on this knife is pretty good. I mean, it feels a little bound up. What about the front flipper? I mean, the, just the detent feels a little weak on it. So, anyways, let's get in it. And, uh, we will check it in and check it out. Probably get through it pretty quick. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the specifics of the knife because I've already got a video on one of these and uh, I made myself pretty clear on it that I really, 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 really like this knife. And uh, it has the potential for me to be uh, a top pick of 2023 for me, the Kaiser Cormorant. And the Cormorant did not come out in 2023 but it's new to me in 2023. So I'm kind of treating it that way. If it's new to me in 2023, then I can claim it in 2023. And that's kind of what I'm doing. I think I'm going to shift this 
to the other scale. And we'll come at it the other way. But on the cormorant, this uh, the button actually travels in a track here. And uh, it's kind of nifty how that works. And the way that I'm going to help that detent is I'm going to put a little extra pressure, a little extra length on this spring. And all I'm going to do is kind of grab it and just stretch it out a little bit. There we go. Doesn't take much. We'll add a little pressure to that button. Maybe help that action. Let's, uh, let's wipe everything down. Looks like it's got the, the original factory grease in it. Did not have any oil in there. So that would probably help the, the action as well. Get it oiled. Get this grease out of here. Other than that, everything looks pretty good in here. It's representing well. No concerns. Okay. Yeah. Wipe the bearings. Yeah, so a little different backdrop. I think uh, it will help to highlight the knives a little bit. We'll see. Because that green backdrop... Man, is that thing busy, right? All right, let's put it back together. Didn't take long. We're already moving towards the finish line here. I notice that this is captured. It's got a little D, D captured ring. Can I put it in from that side? Uh, it helps if I put it in the right hole. Wow. Come on, man. I wasn't even close. Okay. Um... And a little bit of this. Oh, I keep bumping this camera. There we go. I'm figuring stuff out, man. You know how it is. Yeah, it acts it the lock travels in that in that track and uh the stop pin does as well. It's kind of a nice little system. Uh, a couple more little drops of this stuff. I will say I have figured out not to put any oil on the button mechanism or any part of it. Leave that oil free. It can uh, most definitely cause lock stick. There we go. I hope I didn't put too much on that spring could definitely be a possibility doesn't take much better Yeah, man. Let's get this other screw in. I think we can wrap up. Check these screws while I'm in here.
solid as a rock. Yeah, there's no play in that whatsoever. And it's all dictated by the button. The harder I push the button, the freer it is. So it allows you to control that descent. Once you get it moving, you can release some of the pressure on that button and it will control that blade. But yeah, that action's working wonderfully now. Yeah, all right, well, let's get rid of this stuff. We'll wrap up. I mean, and I so like my other cormorant. It's one of those that I, I stayed away from it because of the handle shape and then this blade shape, this hump on this blade. I stayed away from it. And now that I have one, you know, this next one, and I have another one, and I'm going to feature it on the channel as well. But, I mean, this is definitely a top pick for me in 2023. I really like the Cormorant. And uh, this version, this G10, is really smooth. Um, guaranteed this thing. That pocket clip's got a ton of tension. The action on this, I mean, I'm going to give it an A. Like, it's drop shut. The detent's working really well on it. I mean, I actually could probably put a little more. I was concerned that I put too much. But I probably could put a little more on that. But... I think I'll leave it be for now. There's jimping on the top and on the sides. And same thing on this top flipper here. This front flipper. And then there's jimping that runs all the way on the back and then up over the top. It's not combat jimping, but it's fairly sharp. And so with a, a grip back here and the thumb in this spot, it's a confident grip. You know, there's not so confident, confident, very confident. This is a confident grip. This thing is really placed in the hand well. Um, like I said, A action. It's really running well now. And uh, let's check that pocket clip. I mean, I already know that it's going to be wonderful because the other one is. I mean... This knife really disappears. Very small profile. The hole that's cut out in the pocket clip aids to grab it out. Gives you something to grip. And this is 100% a dryer knife. Like, you know, if, if I go for a tumble, when I go looking for this knife after falling down a flight of stairs, a big flight of stairs, that knife's going to be right where I left it. I mean, I'm going to find it where I where I left it, and uh, no worries that it's going to be there. 100% that thing's going to hold on. I mean, such a good grip on this knife. I wonder if it's sharp. Be kind of the, the final coup d'etat on this knife is just having a good sharp blade. And it's a little toothy. You know, I'm going to strop it. Why not? I mean, that is what I do here, right? I take knives apart, I strop them, sharpen them. It's just a little toothy, which, you know, isn't at the end of the day, isn't a horrible thing, but I am i don't like my edges toothy. I like them, you know, plucking hairs, man. One more. There we go. All right, let's see what we got. Because, I mean, it was definitely sharp. It's just a little toothy. I mean, it's still kind of toothy. But it's sticky. Very sticky, very sharp. I mean, this one may be a candidate for me.
considering I like the knife so much, I mean, I don't really have any plans to necessarily move this out of my collection, but this would be one that I could lay this back. I've, I've been uh, practicing with some sharpening at 12 degrees and ooh, does it make a sharp edge? So I've got this Sativian uh, ST-103 in D2 steel, and I sharpened it at 12 degrees on my belt system. And I mean, the, the level of sharpness that's coming out of this thing at that angle is, is ridiculously good. And, uh, I'll probably be giving this knife away on the channel, do this as a giveaway, but yeah, this 12 degree edge, I mean, it is a razor blade. This thing is so sharp. Um, very impressed with it. And how sharp it has gotten. Yeah, so this one may be a candidate, and, and I'm going to do a quick review on this knife so you can watch for it coming up, but um, this one may be a candidate for me to lay black or back. It's got this black-coated blade, so if I laid that back and polished that, that, I mean, not only would it be the kind of sharp that I like, but it would I think it would look really good on this knife as well. So this knife, this Cormorant in the Serape, it it goes for around a hundred and nineteen bucks, something like that. And uh, you can find versions of them out there, but they're they're not super commonly available, but they're out there. And uh, so yeah, Cormorant S thirty five BN steel. There's a Cormorant. And then the S35BN, and then it's got this Serape G10 on it. Really, really nice. If if you don't have a Cormorant, man, I would just suggest, I mean, if nothing else, buy one on Amazon. That way, you, you know, you've know you got a satisfaction guarantee. If you don't like it, you know, you know what to do, right? Yeah, so Kaiser Cormorant. Appreciate you hanging out with me and checking it out.